Yeah! <laughs> Nice. This is going to be a fun project. Good reviews for the cues. Hey, bike farmers. We got a crazy video for you today. I was at my local bike co-op yesterday hunting for a come up and I came across this thing. They laughed at me when I was like, I'll buy that one. I'm not going to mention names, but a certain very large bicycle corporation that's very nearby the bike farmer workshop that... I make fun of a lot on this channel, was in volunteering. One of the employees at this very large bicycle corporation that I won't mention the name of, who thought they were really good at bikes, put this thing together. And it is the craziest hodgepodge of parts. And you know, kudos, I mean, things kind of work. The biggest problem is we got this seven speed freewheel rear wheel, which is fine with the Shimano shifter. And then you've got this SRAM X3 rear derailleur. It's just not compatible. I want to know how much time they spent trying to get this to work because it'll never work. But anyway, that's one thing. And then this terribly cheap front derailleur. I don't know where that came from. And I guess it's been on a few stands over there. People have tried to get it working. Nobody can figure it out. Typical bike co-op stuff, you know, you go to the bike charities and yeah, it is, it is what it is, you know. It's a great place to learn bikes. It's also a great place to get stuck in rabbit holes that you can't get out of. But I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, it's got a ton of potential. These rear derailleurs come in real handy in my spare parts bins when I'm having compatibility issues and I need one. On a side note. I got lucky with this one because I've had this certain kind of pet project in mind. Shimano has come out with a new line of products called Qs, C-U-E-S. It's a group set that everything runs off an 11 speed chain and the crank sets are compatible with all of the cassettes, which are compatible with all of the derailleurs. The shifters all have the same pull ratio, blah, blah, blah. You can just have the Q stuff and it doesn't really matter how many speeds you have, it's all gonna be compatible. Well, I've also come to realize that one by drive trains on regular bikes for regular people makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, it's like 90% of my customers have no idea how a bike shifts. And the more I try to explain it, the worse it gets. I've given up, literally. I've told people, I'm like, I could try to explain it to you, but I'm gonna make it worse. You just gotta ride your bike and figure it out for yourself or watch YouTube videos or I don't know what. I don't know how to teach it. But new bikes, new modern comfort bikes have one by, I don't know, eight or nine speed, nice wide, you know, one by drivetrain. Shimano Qs makes that. And it's not that expensive and it's really good stuff. They've, they've built it to last, or so they say. So we don't run into this obsolescence and all the problems that I'm trying to fight. So I thought, man, if I could get a hold of some bikes cheap, put in one by nine speed Qs drivetrains and upright handlebars, comfy seat, comfort grips and so on. And I'll make comfort bikes myself out of cheap bikes that I pick up at the co-op. So um, that's what I'm gonna do with this one. Now this one, it's got mismatched wheels and it's seven speed and so on and so forth. So I just pulled some brand new wheels down. I really like these frames. I like the triple triangle design. It's almost too aggressive for a comfort bike, but it's gonna work fine. You know, it's already got the RST fork on it. Um, so that softens up the front end. It's gonna make a great comfort bike by the time I get done with it. It's got this big honking upright stem. You know, it's got some real good things going for it, but I'm gonna replace the handlebars, the pedals, the cranks. I mean, a lot of stuff's getting replaced. I found some used tires, so we'll run over the parts that I'm gonna put on this bike and then get to stripping it, and then we're gonna put it together. So sorry about the long intro, but sit back, relax, and enjoy this ride. Pull out Woody Charlson, never miss an opportunity. These are uh, some heavy duty chromoly upright handlebars with a little bit of sweep. Very comfortable, especially when you combine them with these comfort grips. It looks like I might have to find some brake levers somewhere too. Um, these are some cheapo flat pedals that work just fine for this sort of thing. Um, I found this pair of really nice, really plush comfort tires. So I'm excited about that. Um, these are, uh, the, this is the Giant City Connect saddle. This is the same saddle I've been using for seven years. I love them, they're durable, they're comfortable, they're supportive, they're squishy, they're everything for an upright bike. Great saddles. 
The wheels are double walled rims. This is kind of a bigger bike. I could imagine a real big dude getting on this bike. So nice, strong wheels. So this is a 42 tooth single speed chain ring, a 46 tooth rear cassette. This is a nine speed Q's rear derailleur with a clutch that has the capacity to handle that big cassette and a nine speed Q's shifter. Yeah, so we're gonna strip the GT and put all this stuff on it and make a bike out of it. First things first, we'll uh, pop these wheels off per the use. Man, this wheel's all in crooked. Everything's wrong with this bike. You know, God bless the volunteers, right? Where would the bike charities be without the volunteer groups? And it's fun to go play bike shop for an afternoon. One of the problems that we're gonna have is this is a combo unit, so I'm just gonna cut all the cables and start over. I'm gonna start fresh with everything. It's just easier that way. So we'll get to snipping. We're gonna get to snipping and ripping with this one. So there's a couple cables down here. Man, this is definitely messed up. Phenomenal hack job. It is comical. Now I know why they were laughing at me. You know, that's the thing, is if you learn a little something from this channel, a good place to practice is your local bike co-op. That said, you know, this bike was being worked on to either be sold or given away or whatever they were gonna do with it. They sold it to me. And if you do more harm than good, you're not helping. And this is one of those cases where they did more harm than good. You know, we have to undo everything and then redo it. So just do what you know and pick up things and give yourself some time to learn. Don't bite off more than you can chew. That's my little PSA about being a good volunteer in the bike world. There is a reason I'm not really in that world anymore, and that's because I just couldn't handle it anymore. It was too much cleaning up after people, begging for money, redoing things. I think a lot more good can be done with bikes like this in a for-profit setting. For example, give the bikes to me and let me sort through them, and the ones I can't sell for a profit, I'll give away. Problem with that is, is that it's illegal to get volunteers to help you in a for-profit world, so you can't be a for-profit business and then get volunteers, even if you're giving away products. It's just not. It's against the labor laws, which if you think it all the way through, makes a lot of sense. Otherwise, you know, people would take advantage of that. I mean, heck, I probably would. Not on purpose, but inadvertently, I think it'd be hard to separate the two. Okay, so these parts are off. The Hosan cable cutters. These are really nice cable cutters. I saw a comment the other day, somebody was asking about that. There's an affiliate link for it in the description. Affiliate links for most of what I use in the description. So I'm gonna remove all of the bolts from the stem and hit them with the wire wheel. Clean them up a little bit. Ooh, these are in there. This is gonna be a fun project. I'm really excited to see how this Q's stuff works. It's getting good reviews out there. Good reviews for the Q's. These pedals aren't my favorite, but they're probably worth saving. There's not a bit of lube on this front derailleur. You know, all that work and they didn't even lube things. Probably an engineer did it. This is definitely the work of an engineer. Rockin' and rollin' here. Get this bike all torn apart here in one cut. Yeah, well, I'll probably have to cut it. I mean, there's a lot of boring stuff. Hunting for tools and stuff, right? Oh, dropped a crank arm. I think that's it. Leave that bottle cage right on there. That's about all we need to do. Doesn't 
look like anything moved so as long as it was straight before which it probably wasn't it's still straight which it probably isn't but it's okay because we can always straighten it out in the end it's really hard to find these bars with sweep that I like so much. I get a lot of comments. What kind of bars or what brand of bars are those? I don't know, they're generic. Get them on Amazon, get them wherever. But I just looked at Amazon the other day looking for bars like this. Now I like them with a little more sweep than this even, but only the silver ones were available. I have one pair of silver ones left with the sweep I really like. Just not quite popular enough yet. That's a much more comfortable riding position for most regular cyclists, not even cyclists, most regular people. But I don't think it's centered. Eh, maybe it was. Pretty good, pretty good. Before I get going too far on this thing, I'm gonna go ahead and polish the frame. Give it the initial polish at least. Okay. Hey bike farmers, I just wanted to take this lull in the action to let you know how much I appreciate that you've clicked in to watch this video. Now that I've been at it a little bit, I'm starting to learn why everybody's always asking for more. The AdSense money is just barely enough to make it worth starting a channel. If I wanna sustain this for the long term, I'm gonna need everyone's help. Now don't get me wrong, your attention is enough. Don't feel obligated to give more, but I've tried to make it as easy as possible. You can always click the super thanks, that's the heart with the dollar sign in the middle of it, or consider a monthly membership. The monthly membership will give you a little star next to your name, and if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments, I'll see the star, and when I see it, I'll definitely give you an answer. You'll also have access to a little more behind the scenes action that non-members can't see. With all that said, thank you so much, and let's get back to some bikes. I do believe for the new crank, a 123 millimeter bottom bracket spindle, which this one is, so we can use that bottom bracket. Got away with one there. So they do make a Holotech version of the Q stuff, which is probably the better way to go in general. That's the outboard bottom bracket bearings. Um, it's just kind of a better design in general, but you have to buy a bottom bracket then. So I have a ton of these square table tapered bottom brackets around. So I ordered, or I believe I ordered, square tapered crank. Ooh, so shiny and new. There it is. So it's not a replaceable chain ring. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Throw a little grease on there, hey? Eh, it's not rubbing. Not particularly lightweight. Okay, a couple of shiny new crank bolts here. So I don't know how this whole thing is in terms of a business model for flipping bikes, you know, to use this Q stuff and rebuild every bike. It's a lot of labor. Um, and considerable expense. You know, you're looking at $200 worth of parts with all the cues and the saddle and the everything. Um, you know, the wheels on my build here add a lot to the cost, but most bikes you would be able to reuse the same wheels. Let's see what this derailleur looks like. Big honking thing. A little different than I'm used to, but I think I got her figured out. Looks cool, that's for sure. Here's the shifter. Definitely feels good enough. Feels like a Shimano shifter. It's got a really nice cable. And I'm guessing this doesn't need to be lubricated. They probably recommend not lubricating it. I think we want to go like that. It's a little long, could cut it down. I'm gonna reuse this piece of housing. Still Shimano housing, so that's good. This piece came with it, and I think it's a little long. You know, you want a bit of a loop. Gotta be able to move somewhat. Not sure I fully understand how that works. Well, I think I got it working okay. 
All right, let's work on these wheels a little bit. These are stay true wheels, not the fanciest, but they're actually pretty nice. I mean, you know, fits the quality of this particular bicycle that we're doing. And I got Velox tape, old school. Don't even get me started on tubeless. Okay, you got me started on tubeless. So I'm a big fan of just using tubes. Um, I think that if you're a mountain biker or you live somewhere where you're always running over those things that give you flat tires, what are they called? Goat heads? Um, then tubeless is the way to go. And there are times, there are certain punctures, there are certain failures where air escapes that tubeless can handle and save you from having to do a roadside flat change or call for a ride or whatever. But most of the time, I just think that tubeless is like a constant battle of making sure you have enough juice in there. You know, you gotta have the sealants right and everything's gotta be set up right. And then when you do have a problem, it's such a filthy mess and you need, it's hard to set up, so it's really hard to fix on the side of the road in case you do have to. Like, you're like stuck stuck, it feels like. I don't know, I mean, the mountain bikers seem to get by fine, so maybe I just need to like learn how to do it better or something, but I don't know, it just makes so much more sense just replace the tube. But again, I guess if I was a mountain biker, I would be, I'd have my bike set up tubeless, and, but for riding around, or for road biking, just tubes are easy. And I don't know why the hell this Velox tape is so po er, popular. It doesn't really stick at all, and it's hard to use, and whatever. It's the way to, it's, it's what they use, so that's what I use. At least in double walled rims. I like the rubber rim strips and the single walled rims. So there's my hot take. You're welcome. Okay, spoke protector, dork disc. I'm putting one on. So what I look for, is I see these two parallel spokes and then I see two parallel spokes opposite. If there's crossing spokes, it's a three prong. If it's parallel, it's four. So the way I think of it is one, two, three, three prong, or one, two, three, four, four prong. Here's a four pronger. I don't have any big four pronger, so this will kind of look funny. Actually, it'll hide behind the big old cassette that we're gonna throw on here in a second. So you won't even see it hardly. Grease things up. Brand new wheels. This is gonna be a really good bike for a heavier dude. You know, like, any, any guy that's 5'10 to 6'2 has a little extra weight. We got a lot of those guys around here. Whoa, boy hottie. Link glide, they call it. what we're dealing with. Could be stealing the tubes out of those other tires, but it seems like quite a hassle for a couple of tubes. Tires have a direction. It's not that meaningful, but I always put the nicer tire on the rear. This one looks a little nicer than the other one. They're both pretty nice. There's no labels on these. Nice generic tire. I always like that. They're all Kendas anyway. But these are nice and plump. It's gonna give this bike a really comfy feel. I'm excited. I'm excited for this one. This is a good one. It's fun to try out new stuff. I don't get excited about the new high-end technology, but apparently I'm a sucker for the low-end stuff. This tire is struggling. 26 inch. It's a tough one. Requires effort. I'm not a big fan of, I like things to be easy. Oh man, that was close. There we go. Where there's a will, there's a way. Never give up. Having a hard time getting my valve stem through here. See if I poked a hole in the tube with all that wrestling. That is a good looking setup right there. What size are these? 2.1s. Yeah, I am a big fan of what I just did there. Look at that. That is gonna be a really nice rolling wheel. I can, I can just feel it. This is really shaping up to be a good build. I like getting this excited about a stupid old bike. Gets my blood flowing. Amazing. 
Let's do the front one. Thank God there's two. <laughs> there's two wheels. I'm not that excited. It's like that train spotter dude. You seen him in England who gets like crazy excited about all the trains. Anyway, he's been popping up in my feed lately. Roadside flat with these wheels would not be fun. I'll tell you that much. These tires have a tight fit. Should have made them tubeless. <laughs> Shit, with enough sealant, anything's tubeless. One thing I'm noticing is all of the parts on this bike are black, except for the brakes. So I'm gonna replace them. I'm gonna put black brakes. I found a used set of black brakes. That'll work just fine. They're pretty much the exact same as what's on the bike. So we'll pop these off, and then uh, we're gonna put new pads on as well. So another selling point for this bike. So many new parts. There we go. I think we'll just clean things up a little bit. While we have access. Cleaning as we go. You know, you get things out of the way, it makes it a lot easier to get a rag in there. So I'll get a little bit of grease on the posts and into the threads. screwdriver comes in handy for brake bolts and a few other things. See a little bit of rust going in here too so we can put a little drop of tri-flow on there and make it disappear. Bouncing you guys all over the place back and forth back and forth. A bit of grease there that's actually quite a bit of grease but just kind of how it came off the brush. I just do that to kind of smoosh all the lube around, you know, the grease, and I, uh, I sprayed everything on these brakes beforehand, cleaned them up a little bit off camera. Good and tight. Likewise, I think I'll cut new housing for this bike too. Um, this is an old piece of housing, and I'm just gonna use it to get the measurement right. It's gotta be longer than this. I'm gonna go cut one. Try this out. So I find the cable stop on the frame, and then wrap it around. So I could make it a little shorter than that. I'm gonna snip a little off. You can always clean up the edges just by giving it a little snip like that and then open the little plastic piece in there. Sometimes I'll use a sharpened spoke or a nail or a fingernail I guess. Uh, I can make that a little better. Let's clean it up a bit. Some guys will zap it on the wire or the, the grinder. It makes a nice clean cut too. A couple of ferrules on the end of the housing. Let's see how that looks. Well, it's actually touching up here. I don't really like that. I think I'm gonna make it even shorter. Shorten it just a little bit. Well, I think it's gonna be hard to avoid things touching. I think actually this piece is way too long and that's part of our problem, is if this was shorter, we could just go zoom down. So yeah, I'm gonna disconnect the rear derailleur cable. So I'm gonna pull the cable all the way out. And I'm gonna turn the bars all the way over and then just kind of pinch where you know it's gonna be. This is my Hosan cable cutter, which they're really nice. I've got a, an affiliate link in the description for you on that. But we just cut a little bit off, put the ferrule back in, 
and hopefully we got a nice clean cut at the end of the cable here, which we don't. So I'll go grab that cable cutter that I just put away. Yeah, you can see there's a bit of, it's frayed a little bit. Give it a fresh cut so it's nice and clean. Try to rewire it here. So now we got the derailleur cable sorted. Get this cable in there, brake cable. I'm just gonna throw a little tri-flow on it for good measure. There we go. So now they're not rubbing. So back here, with these triple triangle frames, you can run the cables kind of through the triple triangle here. I'm just sort of sizing this up right now. And we'll cut it right about there. It's a good example of how marred it can be. When, when you cut it, you can just kind of grab the marred part, cut it out, and then grab a poker tool. Yeah, that's about as ugly as it gets, but it's passable. Let's see how we did here. Ooh, I think it's pretty good. Grab the boot. I think that's gonna work just fine. But we need brake pads. A little bit of dexterity involved with this. So, when I do that, it does look like it's splayed out a bit. Um, like too much. So let's see what happens if we flip our spacers around. So this is where the dexterity comes in. I always end up dropping the washers. Oh, dropped a washer. Now I gotta find it. Ugh. I never did find it, but I did find another one. Okay, so I put the skinny one on the inside now, and then I go through, position everything in my fingers like that. The pad goes in, get a couple threads on it. That looks better. So if you release the spring, that kind of helps you. You don't have to fight the spring then when you line your pads. Sometimes it makes this part a little bit easier, but the pad here is rubbing on the tire. So I gotta go down. Never should have switched these brakes. This is a lot more work than it needs to be. Okay, so that's about as good as it's gonna get. These are gonna be howlers. I'm gonna have to sort that out. Yeah, the I'm not a big fan of the wheels, the braking surface is anodized or something. We're gonna have to hit that with some emery cloth and it's not gonna look real nice, but it's better than squeaking. So now we know with this one, we just go ahead. Sometimes I can do that in one move. A lot of, a lot of futzing with these pads, especially when you gotta do it in front of the camera. And you can't even see this. So just trust me. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. At first glance. Feels pretty good. I'm 
I'm just gonna go ahead and anchor it down. I'm gonna add a little bit of tension to this side here. A little bit more, but not much. Okay, so it's got a little bit of rubbing. I'm gonna wait until I get the chain and everything put on to really run through everything here and fine tune it. Well, it was really feeling pretty balanced and now it's not. These brakes were pretty crusty when I started. There's a lot of cleaning, a lot of lube. I'm just gonna add a bunch of tension to that side. Okay, we're gonna let that kind of do its thing on its own. Let those springs think about themselves and how they're gonna present. Sometimes I think mechanical things have a mind. It's kind of a dumb thing to think. So I got this piece of housing that doesn't look like it's gonna be long enough. So I'm gonna cut one a little bit longer and start there. Put a little bit of tri-flow. Got a handful of bits. Get the ferrule. Only do a ferrule on one side because the noodle will handle the other side. Wire that inside those other two cables. Oh, actually, it does want a ferrule on the other end too. So some noodles allow room for a ferrule and some don't. Okay, so we already know from the rear that we want the thinner spacer on the inside. Usually the rear's the same as the front, usually, if you have to guess. Oh, dropped some stuff. I drop brake parts all the time. It really isn't easy. Oh, with all, I mean, there's what? One, two, three, four, five washers and they all have to be in just the right order to get it right. That's on every pad on the planet. Pretty hard to get this on video, but I'm just aligning the pad to the rim, making sure that I leave enough room for the tire to pass through without rubbing. And that's when it's slightly open too. A little harder to see over here. I can feel like these springs are really pulling hard. They don't need to pull that hard. So I'm gonna let some tension out of the linear springs on these brakes. These are the tension screws here. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of room. Oh, this side's getting really cranked down. Hopefully it lets me. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, these were used brakes. I pulled off a bike that I think was sitting outside or something because these screws aren't turning. This one isn't. Man. Okay, JIS number two. The only real screwdriver. And I rounded it out. Okay. Uh, after all of that, and I just broke it. So, this is old school, but if you put a screwdriver on the spring, down by its pivot, and then hit it with a hammer, that takes all the spring out of it. And then you can bend it back manually. Go by feel. Okay, I'm just gonna tap this one over a little bit. Quite a bit. Pretty unorthodox at this point. This one's moving now though. It's just fine. You really only need one side to adjust brakes. Like a lot of old cantilever brake systems only have one tension screw. There we go. Now we got it. Look at that. Boom. Hey howdy. Sometimes popping the spring out and back in just resets the equilibrium too. They can be finicky. Like I said, the rear one was acting a little finicky too. They kind of get a mind of their own sometimes. But the used brakes should be broken in already. We're calling that good enough for who it's for. All right, so here's the new chain. The 11 speed Shimano, it's the new stuff. The one chain to rule them all. Just 
want it so the derailleur is pulling on it in the high gear. I think this is the one we remove. So one, two, three, four, five. Remove the fifth one. Break the chain there. Chain came with this quick link. Line them up, slide them in. Grab your chain tool and set it and forget it. Except it's not setting. Good lord. I don't know why this quick link isn't working. I am really struggling right now. There, okay. Man. So I'm gonna trim that cable quick. Grab a cable tip. Give her a crimp. Okay, so I can already feel that the cable is pretty loose. So we're gonna grab the cable, loosen the anchor, pull, tighten her back down. Whoa! Hey, thank God we have the spoke protector on there. Look at that. Dork disc to the rescue. So when you're setting yours up, don't do that. Take your time. Think it through. Man, am I on the struggle bus right now. I just can't seem to get anything right. Good God. All right, and uh, the reason why that cable was loose is because the chain wasn't in the littlest gear, in the little smallest cog. Drop my wrench. Okay. You guys know that they have Mountain Dew real sugar? Well, I've got one right here. I'm broken, clearly. My brain, I have brain fog. But I have Mountain Dew real sugar. Mmm. So it's right here. 145% of your daily recommended serving of sugar. What us sugar junkies love. Watch me kick some ass now, folks. Here's the high limit screw. We're gonna back that off. And that chain is gonna drop right into its happy little, littlest cog home. Our cable tension is still low. So we're gonna Grab it and undo it just a smidge and then redo it. Okay, cable tension's too high, so we're gonna turn in the barrel adjuster a little. No idea what's going on. I've never set one of these up. Now there's two options for the cable routing. So that might have something to do with it. I'm gonna turn in this low limit screw. And just set it so we don't over shift anymore. Okay. I am suspecting that I've got the routing wrong back here. There's two ways to go. So we're gonna try the other way, see what happens. I guess that makes more sense, come to think of it. Man, 
If this is anyone's first bike farmer video, they're gonna wonder how the hell I ever got to the point where I've been doing this for decades and have made a business out of it and a channel. There we go. It really does seem to be shifting great. Once you get the cable routing correct, a little sluggish going down. And that cable will stretch a little bit. We can stretch it manually if you grab the derailleur. And then, uh, I don't know what you can see here. So if you hold the derailleur to keep it from flexing, just grab your cable somewhere and do that. That really stretches things out. Oh yeah, I am a fan of cues. Okay, so let's go back up to these brakes. We can hear them rubbing. They're kind of rubbing all over the place, but we can hear them howling and rubbing. So I'm gonna just make a couple of little tweaks here. This is a case where not a huge fan of the rim brakes. This bike would be better with disc brakes, I think. Probably just because of these awesome tires. So this is emery cloth. It's like a sandpaper, um, 80 grit. I get it from a frame building source, uh, framebuildersupply.com. Um, but if you just kind of make a mess of things. Man, that's a howly one. It's so howly. That was the other side. And I'm totally okay with the dust getting on the pads and whatever, you know, these, they need to be bedded, bedded and wetted together. We're gonna consummate the marriage of these pads with the rim right now. Can you feel it, folks? Can you feel the consummation? God, I'm weird. What is wrong with me? There, it's not howling anymore. I win. Oh, maybe not. New pads, new rims, new howls. You know, if you just rough up the edges a little bit, it takes the resonance out. You know, eventually it'll wear off, you know, just naturally. I just scratched it. It's a used bike, folks. Sometimes if you ride it around the parking lot a few times in a low gear, that helps. The front one's not howling. So we're gonna call that good and uh, just kind of see how it goes. So I'm gonna put this new saddle on there too. That's really gonna help this one sell. You know, I've gotta ask, $4.99 for this bike, and I think I can get it. Um, it's cool looking, it's got all the new parts, Shimano Qs, um, you know, it's very upgradable. If you consider going from nine speed to 10 speed or 11 speed, an upgrade, I think it's all Qs, but uh, you know, it's a selling point. Just a really nice, simple, general purpose, comfort bike. Durable AF, yeah. What else do I need to do to this thing? So I got the bike on the ground. That helps me get things like seats in the right position. And then I can check the handlebars. So I hold the wheel. I'm, I'm looking at the frame and aligning that with the wheel and then looking at the stem. I can tell it's off just a tiny bit, just a scotch. No, scotch, just a smidge. Just kind of tap it. The guy that used to work for me had a pretty good method. He'd carry the three-way with him and align everything on his test rides. I like my bar angle. Don't love the lever angle. So this lever can come down. Actually, both levers can come down a little bit. That fork feels really good. The headset feels good. Okay. This bolt up here is really dry. You know how I like to drop tri-flow in the bolt heads? Like my favorite thing in the whole wide world. I like it. Yep. Very strange. Okay, I can't wait to ride this thing. Oh, the brake isn't squeaking. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I gotta say this nine speed 1146 with a 42 tooth ring has plenty of high end and plenty of low end. The gear range is phenomenal for only nine speeds. Um, this is all anyone ever needs. I'm sold. So here's, here's low gear. This is high gear. I think the guys are coming. Here they come. Hey, we need some bike farmer wheelies. There he goes. Oh, my shoelace got stuck in this. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> nice. So the coolest part about that was is this alley and, you know, this shop is right here in the alley of Gibbs Bike Shop. And when I was a kid, I used to do the same thing. Like I just remember, everybody in town remembers riding their bike through the alley past the bike shop. And now there's this whole other generation and all those guys go to school with my daughter and they're all friends and you know, it's small town living at its finest. I love that. I'm so glad I got it on film. That was cool. And it's my birthday. So that was good. Good, makes, makes it for a good birthday. Um, I couldn't be more pleased with how this turned out. Um, really good project. I'm definitely gonna do more of these. Um, hopefully they sell. I think I just picked up another bike on trade. Um, it's a it's an aluminum Trek frame that I might use for the next one. Um, you know, everybody likes the ones that say Trek on the side, um, and it's pretty much the same deal. So we're gonna we're gonna try it. Um, that one has kind of a sought after uh, RockShox fork that I could sell separately and uh, squeeze maybe enough money out of that fork to pay for all the Q's parts, and then you know, hey, free bike. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for clicking in and, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, don't forget to click that notification bell so you and your bike can stay tuned. Hey, bike farmers, a quick note. If you're looking to get serious about fixing bikes at home, look no further than the Park Tool AK5 Toolkit. I have an affiliate link in the description. This kit provides all the basic tools you'll need to tune up just about any of the bikes that you see on this channel. It also comes with the Big Blue Book of Bicycle Repair written by Calvin over at Park Tool. Also in the description are affiliate links for all the basic things that I use. The grease, the degreaser, the one step, the Dawn Power Wash, Behold. If you see anything else that I don't already have a link for, let me know in the comments so I can add it. I hope these affiliate links will help encourage you to take this on as a hobby or even start flipping bikes for a living like I do.